um, just before we start, just um, just give us your thoughts on the Challenge Cup draw, Robert. Uh, against Hull? Yeah, look, it's, it's what it is, isn't it? You, you, it's luck of the draw, you get what you get. You, I always say to me that you prefer to have the lowest place seeded team, obviously. Um, but anything, when it's an home draw, that's all you can wish for, really. It means you've got back-to-back home games, haven't you? Does that feel like a bit of a, a bit of a luxury? Yeah, amazing, really. Obviously, the first seven out of nine games away from home to start with, it's a bit of unheard of. So to actually play some home games will be good for us, but also good for the fans. So ahead of this game this weekend, just um, can we just check on a couple of guys that weren't in the, the 21? What's the situation with Elliot Wallace? Uh, he's carrying a little bit of a, a foot injury. Uh, it's something that's probably not too... Um, it's not too bad, really, but it's, if, 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 he, if he keeps running on it, it could become bad. So it's a bit like just wrapping him cotton wool, really. And then hopefully it'll, it'll heal the foot. Is there any particular time scale on that? Not, but uh, I think it's... The base said it for at least two or three weeks, just let, make sure that he's... A bit like say wrap him in cotton wool and it should heal his foot should heal if it, if it gets any worse it could it could turn into a stress fracture it isn't at the moment it just it's something that could so basically it's a little bit of rather than you know rushing him and, and making him play when we you know we've got players that can fill in them spots we'd rather make sure he's right for the rest of the year Joe Greenwood how far away is he now at the moment He's very close. I've just that's why I was a little bit late getting in today because I've just we've just been flogging him at the end of the session. <laughs> Not uh, much to his dismay, but yeah, he's um, he's pretty close. He's it's it's really now just about getting some minutes in training. Really, he's 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 done all the things he can with the physio and the condition. It's about putting him in a bit of game related stuff now. Which that's what we've just been doing, just trying to give him a bit of exposure to to actually put people coming in. And attacking his legs and defending, defending him and him, him defending them in sort of a real life scenario. So he's he's looking decent. So hopefully very soon. Has he got a chance for the cup game next week? I think he potentially could put his hand up. Yeah, potentially. Um, hopefully we win this week, so we don't make too many changes because you don't make many changes when you're winning. <laughs> we'll wait and see. And uh, Matty English is that just down to the return to play protocols? Or yeah, it's some extra symptoms. No, no, no. He's he's, he's Quite good news, really, because obviously he's picked up a few endocs over the over the years as Matty. But he, um, the good news was he pretty much this week he was joining with the lads then, just a bit of a, his graded return. So he should be good next week. And like you say, when you're winning, the side picks itself. Really, is that the case at the moment? A little bit, you know. Obviously, it might be a, a couple, a change here and there, but generally the the nucleus of the side will stay the same when you. When you win, it's nice and easy, isn't it? If the players are doing the job on the field and they, they, they get to keep the spots, um, there's always a few few little changes, tweaks here and there when you go and just, just decide on who you're playing against, who suits that team or you know who suits the balance of the squad. So there's always a, a few tweaks here and there, but generally the, the nucleus will stay similar. And how happy are you as a coaching team with how the squad are travelling at the moment? Yeah, exactly. Like I said before, we've, we've played a lot of away games. You know, we start start here when you look at it. We, we played, I think, Wigan and Saints in the first four rounds. Lee did pretty well last year. So we actually, the, the sides that they did really well last year, we went up against them first, you know, first. So to go two out of four has been pretty good. And what's your gauge on Hull Kingston Rovers? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more inconsistent than what I thought. What I thought they'd be. I think that. They're still a really dangerous side, you know. They showed that last year in the in the way that they played. You know, they they are they were really consistent last year. Whereas this year they've they've been in games really. When you actually when you actually go through with a, a fine tooth comb, you realise they probably should have won them games that they lost as well. And if there were a, little, a few incidents, if they'd have just if they'd have iced a few different more moments, I think they'd have um, they'd have got a few more points on the board this year. There's a couple of big personal milestones as well that I'm sure you're aware of uh, ahead of the weekend with Chris Hill's 300th Super League appearance and Jake Connor's 200th. It's not often you get two big milestones in the, in the same game. What nice things can you say about those two guys ahead of the weekend? Yeah, probably very polar opposite players, aren't they, really? One's um, one's in the mixer and he's a, he's a tough, uncompromising player and the other one's all, all flash. <laughs> <laughs> 
to be fair, that's what all the boys were saying today. Actually, we, we we had the highlights up before I went out to the session, and there's one there's one play where he really flicks it back on the inside, a one-handed flick, and then the, pretty much all the boys were saying that that Jake could take a leaf out of Illy's book. But no, the both been the both had really good careers. Obviously, very different careers. You know, Illy started in the championship and worked his way up, uh, and did it tough really. Then became one of the one of the league's top top forwards. He's been. He's been one of them un uncompromising forwards for the past 10 years, which that in itself is a, a, a mean feat, you know, to, to play sort of the amount of games that he has at Championship as well as Super League. And, and with the consistency that he has, yeah, it's credit to Chill and, and everyone knows what Jake's about. He's got, Jake can do things that no other player can do, you know, when he were 17 year old and he was my centre actually a couple, when he first started, when he first came into the side, you know, I noticed that he could do things that just you can't really coach or you can't really teach. He's just got that that sort of bit of magic. I'd tell him to be quiet a few times in games because we're doing my head and giving all opposition a load of stick. Um, but yeah, he's, he's he's also had a brilliant career. Just before we have a chat with Isan, just give us your appraisal of how uh, the guy next year's started this season. Yeah, I think he's, I think one thing that he's done this year is he's he's been consistent. I think we all, we all know the qualities that Isan brings. I'm I'm the one probably a little bit as well. I'm always on his heels. I'm always giving him a little bit of... I'm on it him, really, because I know it's in there. And I know what a class player is. We all know what a class player is. But last year, probably, it'd be amazing one week. And then probably by his own admissions were, were not bad, but just decent. Whereas this year, it feels like he's been eight, nine out of ten every week. So, Isan, what's, what's your own take on your, your personal contributions this year so far? Yeah, uh, obviously it's um, you know been you know a good start for us. Um, like Robbie said, um, going down to Lee in the first round and you know winning that game, um, I think it gave us um, you know a lot of confidence as a team and for myself, you know we can you know do something really good this year. Um, you know from the first day we come in um, for preseason, you know a lot of the boys come back in good shape. So I think that tells you that you know we're willing um, to work hard this year and you know give it our all. So um, it's it's credit to them. You know they're making my job a bit easier too. Um, you know, I just have to get in there, take the tough carries and, you know, just do my job for well, what I have to do for the team. So I um, feel like, you know, having Swifty outside me as well is um, a massive help for myself because, you know, he's got that speed and, you know, he can, you know, add stuff and attack for myself. So all I have to do is just pass him the ball and, then, you know, he finishes it off. So he makes me kind of look good too. We had a chat, didn't we, before the start of this season and you were saying about the, the tough conversations that you'd had with, with Ian Watson. The fact that he went with you with that first, for that first game, the fact that he gave you that shirt, gave you that position, how much confidence did that in particular give you? Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, it's good having confidence um, you know, going into round one, but you know, I think I put a lot of effort in the off-season. I trained really hard. Um, you know, I came back in good shape, so uh, for myself, it was doing those things right. And if I knew if I did... All that, all I could just walk away with was just that I was doing the right job. So, um, you know, I put myself in a great position to, you know, come back in preseason and train really well. So, um, I think it's credit to myself and, um, you know, what I've done in the off season. Do you feel like you're? Because I mean, you, you mentioned also when, when we spoke about, you know, the coaching staff saying, you know, when we bring overseas players over, we want sort of value for money. We want them to be in the the starting lineup. Do you feel like you're? repaying the, the coaching staff now yeah definitely it is a thing you know um obviously water and you know the coaching staff brought me here to do a job and um you know i felt like you know it wasn't a waste of time last year but you know if i wanted to get the most out of my career i had to do my job so um you know if i look at myself and you know at the end of my career i want to be able to say that you know i put all put like all my eggs in one basket and you know i wanted to train really hard so um, yeah, I think it just comes down to, you, you know, motivating yourself, you know, we didn't have, you know, a great year last year, but, um, you know, this year I feel like we're, there's a lot of great energy around the club and, you know, for, for us players, you know, it is a, a, a bit of a younger team, so, um, you know, for myself it's just getting in there and just ripping in each week, so. Um, you mentioned your, what you have to do, there's, there's little extra bits as well, the, the, the way you smuggled the ball out for Adam Swift's try earlier in the season it uh, was was a real highlight we're going to see more of those sort of things from you this this year can we expect a few more a few more tricks uh yeah probably I, I just i just want to try and do my job for the team um i think that just comes um naturally to me i've always been a person that you know offloads the ball a lot to um you know 
like I said, Sufti's always there, so I can, you know, sort of pop the ball to him. So, um, now nah, it's just, it, it comes naturally to me. And whenever I feel like, you know, I'm, you know, running the ball hard or, you know, tackling hard, I feel like that's when I'm getting the best out of, out of myself. So, just lastly from me, do you, have you got any idea what you're doing next year when we spoke? Before the start of the season, you said you were just going to let the season play out a little bit. Uh, I'm not too sure at the moment. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm. I said to what I'm happy here. I'm, wherever I am at the moment, I'm. I just want to do my job for the team, and you know that stuff just falls into place. So um, you know, hopefully, I can you know sort some stuff out soon because you know I'd rather get that stuff just out of the way um, when I can. So um, if I keep playing um, good um, each week, then you know that that's when the talks um, come along. So yeah. One last thing to worry about, isn't it? Well, good luck this weekend, mate. Thanks for thanks for the chat. I'll pass you over to uh, to the other James. Hi guys, um, how are you doing? Hi Matt. Well, good stuff. Um, yeah, most things covered by JD. Just uh, a few for Luke, uh, a few for Luke, please. Um, it's, a sh- it's a small sample size, but you got an identical record to this time last year. Only you played a few more. Uh, sorry, you played more away games. How do you compare your form and the health of the squad with back then? Yeah, I, I think. I think he's hit the nail on the head. Really, it's not just about about the results. It's more about the sort of feel within the group. This is a, this is a, I know everyone says that after off season, and but there there is a real good feel around the around the group. This is a real togetherness, and yeah, it just feels a bit different this year somehow. And I, don't, I can't put my finger on what it is or, or why that is. But yeah, they just I'd probably say that the health of the squad at the moment and the way that we're travelling, we've got a couple of niggles and knocks to certain players, but the actual. The squad as a whole, I think we're in, a, we're in a really good position here. We can actually, these probably next three or four weeks can really put us on a, in a good position for the season moving forward. Yeah, do you feel like you've got a strong, stronger platform than last year? Because I think you had that disruptive start and you didn't play many friendlies. You, you missed out on round one. It probably hurt you more than you thought at the time again. Yeah, I think so. I think when we look back on it, you know, we did a sort of review at the end of the year. One of the things that we realised that them, the lack of pre-season games, the, the, the missing the round one, just we didn't seem to... It took us a little while to get into the swing of things, really. Another team seemed to be on straight into it, and um, yeah. Whereas this year around, we feel a bit better about that. Yeah, is this a good test of how far you've come? Because you, you didn't fare too well against Okay, did you last, last year? It's a very good test. You know what? There, I said before, I said they've probably been a little bit more inconsistent. Than I thought, but that's not really by the performance. That's more about just the results. I think, I think they've still been. They've, they've, They've still been a real, they've been really good. They put some good performances in. If they just iced a few more moments, they'd, they'd have won them games. I think they're a really difficult proposition to go against. The um, ever since he's come over, Peters, he, he sort of plays that NRL style where they put the ball in the pocket. They play the long game against you. They, they make you come out of your own end repeatedly over and over and over again. So I think it's going to be a real good test to where we're at. It's similar to you then in that sense. Do you think you think similar kind of styles and you've got those players that. That with a bit of flair that can turn it on if you if you do work hard and get that field position. Yeah, I think so. That's what that's what the that's what they thrived on last year. You know, they put the ball in pockets, they had really good transition D where they didn't let you out their half and then when you give them an opportunity, people like Mikey Lewis, you know, takes over and you know, Litton and, and Parcel at nine are really dangerous at nine. So they have players that sort of can turn the game on ahead in, in an instant really and that's what they're waiting for. So we've got to limit them as much as we can getting in getting in our twenty. Because when they do, they've got dangerous players. Yeah, just got to win that arm wrestle, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a bunch of clubs on, on six and four points. Are you expecting it to stay that competitive um, around those playoff places? I think I think for for the neutral, it would be really nice. I think it would be really nice for the Huddersfield Giants if we can go 20 points clear of everyone else and, uh, <laughs> and not be anywhere near anyone else. I'd like to see a bit of a breakaway. But I think... I think the way that it's set up this year and you're looking at the squads and the, the games that I've watched actually, you know, you only have to look at Salford and Wigan last night, what a close contest that was and I think the league is all set up to be a really exciting league where I don't think there's going to be much between the, the, the bottom and the top. Yeah, absolutely. And then just finally, last home game, last, uh, sorry, last home league game until, until May, which, which is pretty crazy, isn't it? Are you determined to make it count this, this weekend? Yeah, I think so. We've got, we've got to make sure that we... We win as many as home games, you know, at the end of the year, generally tides that win a lot of their home games that generally do pretty well. Um, so it'd be, it'd be nice to sort of go on this little bit of an away streak that we've got, you know, with a nice home win under his belt.